This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, June the 22nd, 2019. It's the feast of the two most high-profile English martyrs, St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher. Thomas More, born 1478 in London, was a polymath lawyer and philosopher who was appointed by King Henry VIII as the Lord High Chancellor of England at the young age of 51. Moore was brilliant in every way. He was a family man and a man who loved England. And as with everyone associated with Henry VIII, though, Moore's situation got worse as Henry made his way through wife after wife. And when Henry ultimately let his obsessive libido lead England first into schism and then outright Protestant heresy, Moore was put in an impossible situation. He advised Henry not to take step after step after step, and he tried to step down when Henry ultimately abandoned the church. But when Henry refused to accept Moore's resignation and insisted that Moore take the so-called oath of supremacy, Moore had to refuse. But refusal was automatically treason, and treason was automatically death. Moore's family and even some of the clergy tried to get him to change his mind, but he staunchly refused. And his last words were, I die the king's good servant, but God's first. John Fisher's story played out the same way. He was a bishop and the chancellor of Cambridge University. And he too was a brilliant author and a polymath. And he too was put in a bad situation when Henry jumped the shark. Sadly, like Thomas More, many of the clergy advised Fisher. They told him to take the oath, rejecting the authority of the Pope and pretending that the king of England was somehow the head of the church. By far, many of the bishops of England condemned themselves eternally rather than be condemned to worldly death. Fisher and Moore died within a few weeks of each other in 1535, and both are considered martyrs. When Pope Leo XI heard about Fisher's situation, he named him a cardinal, but it's not clear if Fisher ever knew that he died as a prince of the church. Today is also the feast of St. Paulinus of Nola, born 354 AD in what is now Bordeaux, France. He was a Roman senator who was actually a Suffolk consul to the Roman Emperor Gratian and an accomplished poet. He was the governor of Campania in south-central Italy in 380 until his wife convinced him to leave that life behind and become a Christian. He did, and when his wife died young, he was elected bishop of Nola, south of modern-day Naples in Italy. He brought that Roman efficiency to the early church and wrote a slew of letters, helping to organize and structure the day-to-day business of managing church properties and charitable projects. One of the best little bits of trivia about Paulinus of Nola is that he is probably responsible for introducing bells into Western Christian worship. In the East, bells have always been a thing, but in the West, the Romans tended to swing big giant bells or none at all. The use of smaller portable bells wasn't part of prayer in what we call Europe. Paulinus died today in 431 AD and was popular among big-name saints of the day for his iconic story. He was rich and powerful and he gave it up for love of Jesus. St. Augustine, St. Jerome, St. Ambrose, St. Martin of Tours all wrote and spoke about him often. And finally today in 1899, Richard Gurley Drew was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. He was an inventor and a scientist who worked for Johnson & Johnson and then Permacell and finally a small company called 3M. 3M was mostly in the sandpaper game at the time, and some of their best business came from auto shops who bought in bulk to prep cars for repainting. Many of them complained how difficult it was to get nice sharp edges in their work, and so Drew set to work inventing something that could help. In 1925, he stumbled upon a paper strip two inches wide with a pressure-sensitive adhesive that could be removed without leaving a residue and masking tape was born. And painters have been looking for a clean, sharp edge ever since. Public Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.